Welcome back to the show. There. We should <laughs> actually get Paul to sing this. Yeah, It'll be better yeah. than this track. But anyway, go on. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm a movie. Uh, there's an old saying, never work with animals, but we're throwing out the rule book uh, because our next guest is just too cute. Yeah, his owner is pretty talented too when it comes to the singing, as I said. Will you please welcome Paul Byram and his furry psychic, Bradley, to the show. Yeah. Oh, here's up. Yeah. I got excited there because you were like, oh, we got very, he's very cute. And I knew we were going to go, and his owner isn't too bad either. That's but you fine. didn't. You That's just went with the music. we did it like That's that. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Good uh, to see you, Bob. Yeah, great to well, be here. I, I, I think but Bradley's always been the more popular one, though, I think, Paul, isn't it? <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, uh, so Bradley kind of goes everywhere with me. And uh, over recent times, when I turn up for interviews or TV appearances on my own, people are like, the face of disappointment, like, <laughs> where's Bradley? I'm like, dear God, what? And he's even now got his own, like, own Instagram account. And yes. He's, like, got a lot of followers. Just yeah. So um, it's more quite than, funny. More than you? Uh, no, let's not be ridiculous. Well, he's a New Yorker, though, isn't he? He is a New Yorker. He's a Morky from New Yorkie. Um, so a Morky is half Maltese, half Yorkie. Oh. And they're unusual over here in Ireland. But, like, when I got him, he was brown and orange and, like, totally not this colour at all. He was a total scruff bag. I loved him, I thought. Now, I was half cut when I got him. <laughs> I wasn't planning on getting a dog. And um, and then I just fell in love with this little fella and uh, I had to take him. And, and so we brought well, him back get, to yeah, Ireland. I love how you're going to... So explain the story then, be of the half cut. Well, how do you actually so get the dog? That's the picture of me literally... Um, I, is that when you got him? Literally the... in a yellow cab in New York, no. going back to Queens with this dog. So are you what have I drunk just in done? that photograph? Huh? Are you drunk in that photograph? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm drunk in a lot of photographs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on stage, it's generally. Uh, yeah. okay. I know, I'm joking. But um, anyways, yeah, so uh, I got him and, and, and here we are eight years later and having the time of our lives. We do pantos and everything together. And so, so, But it started off because you were leaving a kid's birthday party going, that's it, kids are not for me. Well, it wasn't so much that. I, I was like, I went to this party and I thought there'd be like, it'd be good crack and there was just kids roaring everywhere and kind of having the crack. And I was like, oh dear God, get me out of here. So I left around five o'clock and then I'd stumbled across this place that had dogs and I was like, well, I couldn't just play with these for a while. And, um, and needless to say, I did. And then I was like, wow. they were all like designer dogs, you know, these kind of palms and stuff and very pretty dogs. And then in amongst them all was this kind of scruff bag. Aww. And um, and I started playing with them. It kind of reminded me a bit of Rod Stewart. And <laughs> um, and so then we took him home and, and here we are, like eight years later. And uh, he's Irish, he's got his EU passport and stuff. And uh, He's, he's, he's doing great. So, but like, there was so much work involved in a dog. It is not something, a decision you should be making drunk. No, so how did you wake no. up the next day? Was there like, yeah, wee boo there, yeah, everywhere of the apartment? Oh, no, I, I don't do that when I'm drunk. It's generally, uh, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, but Bradley, Bradley um, was kind of pretty cool from the get-go, you was know. He? Uh, he was, and like, you couldn't but love him, you know. And, um, and it's funny, even people that aren't dog, lo dog lovers come across him and they're, they're like, oh my God, what, what, what's the dog, you know? And so, um, you know, here's the thing. It was a, a snap decision. I'm a dog person, I've always been a dog person. But I suppose that's a major part of why I've teamed up with Dog Trust mm -hmm. Ireland, because a lot of people in the last two years in particular have gone about getting dogs. And I'm not too sure how much thought has gone into it. And I remember at the time even seeing people with new puppies left, right and centre going, oh dear God, what happens when we mm. return to normal? And I think that is where we're at now. Dog trusts are getting inundated with people surrendering their dogs mm -hmm. because the dog doesn't suit the lifestyle that they thought they had. So when you return to life and normal, you want to go out to the pubs, you want to go to restaurants and stuff, and all of a sudden you've got a dog that's yeah. looking for love and attention. Yeah, we got our dog Brownie about seven years ago through Dogs Trust, and they nearly put the mm. fear of God in you because they give you an, an initiation, be like, mm. they're going to chew your shoes, they're going to chew your mm. remote control. You know, it's not just the, you know, the poo and whatever you come across in the morning. Yeah. Like, so you really have to consider it. And also when you go a way you've got to consider, like yeah. holidays, everything. Yeah. For sure. And yes. places aren't dog friendly, Paul. And that's it's, why they have their, what is it? The dog, dog friendly, friendly day this Ireland. Friday. Dog friendly Ireland day is tomorrow. Yes. Um, and it's hashtag, so make sure. And what we're trying to do, for the last five years, it's been very much like kind of encouraging pubs and, and outdoor places, uh, or even some indoor, like there's a, the Bath Pub and Bath Avenue are great for mm. dogs. They're yeah. always welcoming and dog I love them outside. so much. We love yeah, I go in and I watch yeah. Liverpool and I bring Bradley and we have great crack. Great. So we're trying to encourage more places to be like that. However, what this year we're trying to emphasize is on dog owners to maybe spend a little bit more time with their dogs, enrich their life, make their dog, make their life a happy life. You know, giving them 
feeding them twice a day and just taking them for a the little bit of a walk isn't enough. You know, you really need to tire them out. You need to play with them. You need to engage with them. These are family members. Um, and if you go on to Dog Trust Ireland, they'll send out this little pack. It's called the, the Game Changer Pack, right? And on the back, they'll send you like little games and stuff. And on the back, there's a QR code and ideas as to how to play with your dog, how to interact with your dog. So that it's not going to be interested in eating a remote control. Yeah. It's not going to be interested in eating your slippers. Because that's you know. what happens. When they're bored, that's when they get distracted. Yeah, and then owners are like, oh, I don't think I want this dog. Yeah. Let's give it away. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's a vicious cycle. Mm. Um, and, of course, Dog Trust Ireland are, you know, they do their very best to rehome dogs and they do their best to make sure no dog is ever put down. Um, and, and, in fact, they ensure that. But that costs money. I mean, yeah. so, like, even if you aren't a dog owner, you can still support Dog Trust by going on and getting, uh, setting up a direct debit if you want it. Like, you can buy this lovely T-shirt, be yes, the person so that your dog thinks you are. Um, and you can just support them that way. You can drop out blankets, all that kind of stuff. Dog Trust, the website has so much information on how to be a responsible dog owner. And I think that's what it's all about, really, you know, because... Mm -hmm. Like, we're a great country for dogs. We are lots and lots of dog owners in Ireland, but we have to be responsible and we have mm. to be kind of aware that when you get a dog, it is for life. It's mm. not just at Christmas that with this campaign should run. Mm. People need to be aware that it's a full-time commitment. This fella here is a... He comes to the gym with me and everything. Wow. Um, well, yeah, you mean, I think you take spending quality time to a, a whole new level. Like you said, the gym, yeah, he works with you yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, Panto? I'm giving Twink a run for her money, you know. <laughs> um, Twink used to run around with Teddy and now it's Paul Ireman uh. and, and Bradley. And, um, you know, it's... Look, it's it's something that I took on. I, I love him dearly. It's but the best he, decision I ever made. He got a role in the Panto. Oh, yeah. It's, and now he's... Is he always in the panto with He's you? He's been in the last three. And um, <laughs> I kind of... I always saw that yeah, one. I remember that Like that he, um, Beauty and the Beast, and like that's him on the plane going off to, to New York. Is and Aer Lingus, Aer Lingus brought that. him out a plate of chicken and everything. No, so can really? he sit beside you on a, on oh, a regular passenger seat? No, seems? the regulations have all changed uh, on that front now. But like, I, I don't do it. I, it's, it is a tie down, especially if you're going out on tour, bringing a dog okay. with you everywhere is difficult. Like mm. so, um, but we, we are lucky. We have a nice little support network. And, um, and as you can see, he's pretty easy to, uh, to look after. And he's got his eyes glued over there because the kitchen's over there. For anybody yes. that's kind of going, what's going, going on? Yeah. He's like, is what he a is going on? Would he eat Naki? That's eat, what's on the menu tonight. The problem tonight. is Bradley will eat anything. <laughs> and that leads to me having to pick up everything that Bradley yes. eats a couple of hours oh, later. What you put so, in a dog, yes. you do get It has out. to come out. Yes, Absolutely. it does. Absolutely. It does. But in terms of making places more dog friendly, I totally get it because we would try and go away, but you're looking for a dog sitter. People, I think, don't take mm -hmm. into account you could be spending 20 quid, 25 quid for yeah. someone to mind your dog Passing while you go rest. away. Yeah, that exactly. So rest. if more yeah. places were dog friendly, it would be a game changer. Yeah, like I went away the summer um, when we were in lockdown myself, Catherine and Bradley went off and did our staycation as they were calling it at the time and we booked into a number of kind of so-called dog friendly places and then you'd get to it and you'd realise well you can't sit in the bar with him mm. and you can't go here you can't go there he has to literally stay, stay in his in room bedroom, yeah. I'm like well that's not a dog friendly environment at yeah, all yeah. you know that's not a dog friendly hotel um, and, and so you know it would be great if you know we were able to go to places and I tell you this for nothing Dog owners are very loyal people. Like, obviously they are, they'd have dogs. But if they found a place that was dog friendly, like for example, where I get my hair cut, cut and sew, they're dog friendly. Yeah. And we go there no matter what. And yeah. Bradley sits in the chair. You become loyal to those places mm. because they're open. I go, as I said, to Bath Avenue to watch the Liverpool games because they're dog friendly. Yeah. People will support places that are dog friendly. Mm. There is this though. If you are going to be an owner, and because I can hear what people are saying at home, I don't want to be sitting in the bar with the dog. I, <laughs> I can't have my Guinness without hair. And, 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 you know. no. So you have to be a responsible dog owner. You know, make sure your dog's kept on the lead. Make sure your dog is well behaved. If your dog is a puppy and is excited and is jumping around, don't bring him into a you know, place yeah. like that. Yeah. So I'm talking about people that are, have a dog like this, for example, that is respectable, um, yeah. on a lead, very safe. We're in a society where lots of people don't have children. And the dogs are their children. Mm. And that has to be kind of considered as well. Mm. Um, and maybe a little less rolling the eyes when people see a dog in a pub with Who somebody. Who rolls their eyes? Well, generally Jesus. parents, you know, they're like, why would you bring a dog to the 
bar. Is it? Like, oh my Who god. Those people? I'm yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, little Johnny is running amok with yeah, a dirty yeah. nappy. Yeah. And we all have to kind of sit there and go, that's grand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, look, I, I love kids, but I very much love dogs. <laughs> and I think I yeah. we, need, I we, need, dot, dot, we dot. need more dog friendly places Aww. like Virgin Media. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, great to see you, Bradley. Great, great to see thanks you too. Oh, thanks. Be sure and hashtag dog friendly Ireland Day tomorrow. That's go it. on to dogtrust.ie and support them, please. God, or I'll lose my job. That's it. Job <laughs> done, Paul Byram. Good job.